الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون صدق الله العظيم This is the ayah that you have read many times that you have heard many times This ayah has a lot of power and emotions attached to it One of the power and emotion that is attached to this ayah that this ayah is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words directly spoken and it is calling upon the attention of the believers. So when you read these kind of ayahs, you got to be extra, extra attentive and extra, extra careful because this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to believers. All the non-believers are minus out. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is having a one-on-one conversation with believers saying, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. Those of you who have believed. I have prepared a special gift for you. And that is the month of Ramadan. And I made it mandatory for you to fast. And you're not the only one who is receiving this gift. There are people before you who have received this gift. And the whole idea behind giving this gift is so that you may achieve piety. You may achieve the God consciousness. You must have a alive heart, not a hardened heart, a God conscious heart. Whenever you do any of your actions, you have to look back and you have to remember that Maliki Yawmiddin, there is a day when I will be responsible for any of these actions that I'm committing. If they're good, we're going to help me out. But if they're not good, how will I going to back up? How am I going to back? How am I going to give the backing to that as to why I committed these sins? Why did I do it? And on that day, there will be no answer. On that day, you cannot make up an answer. Yet there will going to be people even on that day who are going to argue. You are going to argue and say, I don't take this evidence. I don't understand this evidence. I don't understand these angels. Who are they? I've never seen them before. I don't know which book is this. And those are the kind of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those are the people against whom their body parts will witness. They themselves will going to be witness against them. So this is the month to reflect upon and have an improvement. Something that I spoke to you about last time when I was here that all of these evil things are chained, not closed, chained. Their effect is minimized. So it is time for you and I to reflect upon ourselves and see how we can improve. Now let me give you an example of this chaining process. During the fasting, a lot of the time, things that you would do in other times in a year, you will take a moment and think back and say, I'm fasting, I can't do that. I'm fasting, I can't miss out on a prayer. I'm fasting, I can't, I can argue. I can't fight. I cannot use bad words. If somebody tries to initiate anger in you, aggravates you, you say, I'm fasting. Get back off. You take a back stance. You're not aggressive about it. Why? Because there's this consciousness in you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instilled and empowered. This consciousness is there the rest of the year, but we suppress it in the name of our wishes in the name of our wills, we push it down. Now it comes up and we let it thrive. Remember, in a week or so, when there's going to be time for Eid, happy moments, everybody will be joyous, everybody will going to be meeting with their family, their friends, exchange of gifts, greetings, food, good things. But that day, don't forget the prayers. 
exactly the way you made special arrangements to pray them on time. Do not forget that if I may, can make an arrangement to come to masjid for the whole month, I can now make an arrangement too to come to the masjid the rest of the year. I can. That's what basically I showed this month. Allah, I can. So when I've showed I can, why do I take the back seat? Why do I move forward only to go back? And then come back next year and move forward and then go back. This going forward and back is not making any change in me. I am not progressing as a human being. I'm not excelling. And the idea is to excel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ I want you to achieve that piety. Why? Because, O oh believers, وَعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ I have prepared for the pious people what? Jannat. Not one Jannah. Jannat. And these are the Jannat. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا abada. You are going to live there forever. But to get there, there will be some tests that you have to pass. There's a lot of peer pressure, not just in schools, also in colleges. Quite a few kids are already entering colleges. Some of the kids have already flown to the college. There's a lot of peer pressure, even at workplace. Even when you grow older, the peer pressure doesn't go away. The peer pressure just t- takes different, different stance. Sometimes the peer pressure comes from your friends. Sometimes it comes from your co-workers. Sometimes the same peer pressure will probably going to come from your kids, from your family, maybe from your spouse. The pressure is there. But you have to make sure that you fight back with the pressure. And you make the arrangements. And this is the month to learn how to make that arrangement. One of the companion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Abi Umama radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said, I asked the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, Murni bi amalin, tell me one thing that I will do that I will enter the heavens. And the Prophet said, Alayka bi sawm, you must fast. Fa innahu la idla lahu, there is no replacement for it. Then I ask again, Ya Rasulullah, Murni bi amalin, tell me something else that will going to make me go in Jannah. And the Prophet said, "Alayka bi sawm, you must fast. Fa innahu la idla lahu. There is no replacement of that. And this is reported by Imam Al Nasai, Imam Ahmed ibn Khuzayba ibn Hak ibn Hibban, and Imam Hakim. Many people report this hadith. Now, if you look closely, when you fast, there are many things that you do that make you a person who will succeed. Now let me give you some of the list of the items that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that these are the people who Prophet give them the good tidings. At-ta'ibun, those who repent. This is the month that we repent. We seek forgiveness. Al-abidun, those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the month we increase the worship. Al-Hamidun, those who praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the month we increase the praises. Al-Sayihun, those who travel in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Raqi'un, those who bow down in front of Him. Al-Sajidun, in the ruku' position and also in the sijda position. These are some of the acts that people do in abundance. And on top of that, Al-Amiruna bil ma'roof wa anil munkar. They are the one who promote goodness in themselves and also the goodness in the other people around them. They stop people from doing bad, and but they first look upon themselves and stop themselves from doing bad. Wal-hafiruna li hududillah. These are the people who safeguard themselves and they remember the boundaries that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. I must not cross this. So this month, we live that life. And these are the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ These are the mu'mineen to whom the good tidings must be given. And if you look at this ayah, majority of these things we do this month. How do we do it in abundance? We try to do more and more. There are people who go home and after taraweeh, they want to pray tahajjud. Then they get up like, very early to pray the tahajjud so that they can also do the suhoor. Then they try to catch up their sleeps here and there. They work hard. Very hard. 
But in the rest of the year, we don't have that obligation that you don't have to get up that early in the morning. You don't have to do a lot of those things that you do now in the month of Ramadan. Yet what we do, we take many steps back. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Give the good tidings to those who have believed. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And have committed and have done good deeds. This is very important. Why is this very important? Because if you look back, the story of Iblis. Iblis was a believer. He believed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him. He said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, خَلَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارِ You created me from fire. And then when he was asked to leave, he said, Rabbi, oh my Rabb, give me some time. So he believed he was the Rabb. And he's the Rabb, so he asked him too. So he believed that Allah is to be asked, Allah is to be believed, Allah is the Rabb. But where did he back off? He didn't follow the directions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't follow the directions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. Bow down to Adam. Aba was takbar. He was arrogant. He said, I will not going to do it. Ana khayrum min. I am better than him. I will not going to do it. So as a result of this direct order, not listening, what happened to him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Aba was takbar wa kana min al kafirin. He became among the kuffar, the deniers. This is one thing that makes us stand apart. We believe and then we work hard. Believe and work hard. Just work hard, no believe, doesn't, doesn't do any good. Now think about it like this. If I don't live in the United States, why should the government of the United States give me any kind of benefits? It will be foolish of me to live in Canada and expect the U.S. government to give me some benefits. So these are the people who don't believe in Allah. Why would they expect anything from Him? They're doing good deeds, but they don't believe in Him. So when you don't believe in Him, what do you expect from Him? So amanu, believe in me first, then good deeds. And these are the people, anna lahum jannah, anna lahum jannat. These are the people from whom there are gardens. Underneath these, there will going to be streams. What kind of streams? Quran tells us streams of milk, streams of honey, streams of water. Streams that will going to run by your command. Over here, things flow in one direction. Everything is going towards gravity, towards the slope. But over there, things will going to run by your wish. If you want the stream to go from left to right, it must flow left to right. This is the place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you cannot even imagine what you will going to get over there. And this is for who? This is for muttaqeen. There is a hadith Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling all of this information through His Prophet to us. قَالَ اللَّهُ كُلُّ عَمَلِ ابْنِ آدَمَ لَهُ Every good deed that the son of Adam does is for him. Illa siyam, except for the fasting. Fa innahu li, it is for me. Wa ana adzibihi, and I will gonna give the reward of this. What exactly does that mean? That means every other good deed, if you look upon, there is a number to it. Pray in the jama'ah 25 times, 27 times. Do this deed 10 times. Do this deed 700 times. Pray in the Kaaba 100,000 times. Pray in this masjid these many times. 50,000. There is a number. But with Psalm, there is no number. There is no number. This is the beauty of the Psalm. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You have done this all for me. I'm not going to put a number to it. When we meet on the day of the judgment, I'm going to tell you your numbers. That's why in another hadith, for the person who fasts, there are two moments of happiness. One when he breaks the fast. And the other one when he will going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will going to show him his report card. This is what you earn because of your fasting. Subhanallah. This is a beauty of it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considers it so high that he did not even put a number down to it. 
In another hadith, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kulli shayin zakatun. For everything there is a charity. Wa zakatun jasad is sawm. And the charity of your body is sawm, fasting. Just like charity is required of you to give out of your wealth, this is also a required charity to be given out for your body. And what does fasting bring in you? The Prophet said, As-siyamu nisfu sabr. The fasting, half of it is patience. If you look at the fasting process, what do you do all day long? You're patient. I can't do this. I can't do that. I want to do it, but I'm not going to do it. This is patience. Everybody's eating. I'm not going to eat. What should I do for that half an hour at lunchtime? Everybody's eating. I'm not going to eat. I'm very hungry, but I'm not going to eat. I'm thirsty. It's 100 degrees outside. 122 degrees outside, 125 degrees outside, but I'm not going to drink. Nobody's feeding me, I'm alone in the house, but I'm not going to do it because Allah is watching me. This consciousness that is brought forth, this is sabr, this is patience. And what does sabr brings? The Quran says, Inna Allah ma'as sabirin. Allah is with the people who are patient. So that brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He says, I am with you. What better reward does a person want when Allah says, I am with you? And another ayah, Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin. Allah loved the people who are patient. So this patience brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on the day of judgment, these two things will going to ask forgiveness for our sake. The Psalm will going to step forward and say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please forgive this individual. Because he did not eat anything, drink anything, he kept his fast at its strength. So please forgive him. And the Quran will also going to walk forward and say, Ya Allah, he stood at night and he used to recite me. And all of this was done to please you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will going to take their intercession and will going to forgive the believer. This is the beauty of a soul that stops you from doing a lot of things that you would do in other times. I would like to close out today's khutbah with one hadith. Because hadith that I'm presenting to you talks about quality. Not quantity, quality. Because the whole idea of soul is to bring that quality in you. You need to polish yourself and shine it and bring the best of you out. Now the problem is after the month of Ramadan, these different weather effect, spiritual weather effect, we forget to shine it again. So this hadith talks about one of the beauties. The wife of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha reports it, that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ مِنْ أَكْمَلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِيمَانًا أَحْسَنُهُمْ خُلُقًا وَأَلْطَفُهُمْ بِأَهْلِهِ You know what completes the belief of a mu'min? Is good characteristics. Having a good character. That completes the iman. And what else completes the iman? Being nice to your family. وَأَلْطَفُهُمْ بِأَهْلِهِ He's extremely nice, humble, and kind and polite to his family. That completes the iman. These are the kind of things to draw from the fasting. And moving forward, take it with us and not leave it behind. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'iril muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim.